Hi, in this tutorial we're going to look at getting our work done in Substance Painter over into Unity, Unity 2017 in this case, uh, and how to get all of the work that we've done in Substance Painter to look close to how it, uh, how it should over in Unity. Now the thing that we have to remember is that no matter what you do, uh, the output from engine to engine can look a little bit different. For instance, here we are inside of uh, um, substances iray output and of course when we exit that and we're back uh, in editing mode then this of course looks different as well um, next time uh, in some of the other tutorials that we're going to look at we're also going to take a look at how to output this for uh, unreal uh, as well but you've already noticed in our past uh, lectures that when we move this to even sketchfab and things look different too so the process here is going to be inside of Substance Painter, we need to do several steps. First of these is we're going to move into the configuration of Substance Painter and we're going to start working with some of the Unity presets here. Um, these presets will allow us to um, automatically create the appropriate texture so that they move into Unity without too much trouble. Um, and then while we're there, we'll want to add a few other outputs that we want to be used when we're inside of Unity. Uh, the steps are pretty simple. It goes like this. Um, when we're ready to work, we've got uh, everything set there. I'm going to come over to File, Export Textures. This will bring up our export document. Um, in the configuration, then there's a whole bunch of presets um, built for different sorts of situations. We're going to work with the Unity 5 standard metallic output. Um, Unity 2018 changes this a little bit, but in 2017 this still works well. This is using the standard uh, metallic roughness. Now this is the one by default. It will take out an albedo, met metallic smoothness, normal, and emission. Notice that some of the different attributes actually are tied into the alpha channels of each of these outputs so that you have kind of one small texture with lots of information packed inside of it. The other area that we're going to output, in this case at least, will be an ambient occlusion map since we're actually already calculating it. The problem is, is that this default preset does not include that. So what I'm going to do is uh, take the standard metallic and I'm going to duplicate it so that I have this new standard metallic. Uh, we can um, do whatever we uh, need to with this, but I find this a, a pretty easy way to uh, to do it and not mess up my original. So I'm going to call the standard metallic and AO um, just so I've got this preset. Here's the output map that's going to do of course. Uh, I'll come over and make another one that we've got set up. This one I will rename so that it includes our AO. Now here's the AO but we need to make sure and tie the input maps to it. So I'm going to grab the ambient occlusion, come down, come down and drag it into uh, the RGB check here. All I really need is the gray channel. Ambient occlusion is going to be black and white. Um, so that builds this uh, this new texture. So what it will do is when it outputs it will make sure and include an AO map that is tied into the ambient occlusion. So now uh, what I want to do is come up here back into the export. I'm going to come down and choose from the presets my new Unity 5 standard metallic AO that I've got set up. You'll notice that with each of these then we've got all those including our new AO which is uh, what we want. Here we can choose where we're going to export it to. Um, so in my case uh, I have a file on my desktop here substance output demos. I'm just going to go ahead and select it right here. Just drop it all into here for now. And when I click export, uh, then all of this will fire up. It will export all of those texture maps uh, all to that folder. Now remember what we're building here is uh, just the uh, texture maps uh, is exporting to that. So we still need to make sure we have that FBX in another location. If you're working in class, then that FBX is available on our forums, um, and so you can grab hold of that uh, to start to work in Unity. Okay, once this is complete, um, you'll see something that says like this. There's some warnings that we could look in the logs. Some of these warnings include things like we don't have any emissive um, work in our textures and a bunch of other things. It's okay. I'm going to go ahead and click on OK here. What will happen here is now if we were to take a look uh, at the output, then here are all those texture files that it's output. 
So now we need to move on uh, to Unity. Okay, so in Unity I'm going to start by making a new project. Uh, this new project I'm going to go ahead and just put inside of our current working project here, our Substance Output Demos. Uh, I'm going to call it uh, our Substance Demo, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create the project. Uh, this is Unity 2017. We worked out of Substance Painter 2018. All right, so once Unity is opened up, uh, I'm going to rework the layout here a little bit. I prefer uh, the 2 by 3 and I prefer to see this as a one column layout. Now here I can start uh, importing assets. I can either draw, drag and drop them in or I'm going to come and just use import new asset. Um, and here I'm going to bring in um, all of the files um, that I've got created for here. So let, let me just show you what they are. So here are all the textures that I just imported. Um, I'll go ahead and start and import those to start with just so I've got all those textures in there. It takes a little bit for it to reach out and grab hold of all of them. Um, so I'll come back when these are all imported. All right, once these are all imported, uh, there's one important thing that I'm going to want to do. If you look at all of these as they come in, then you'll see that they're all looked at as a texture type default. Uh, but some of these, I can look at them right here, they're actually called normal. Some of these we want Unity to see them as normal maps. And we can fix this later, or I can just easily grab hold of all of them, tell them that it's going to be a normal map, and a click, click on apply. It will make that a little bit simpler once the time comes to, um, uh, to rebuild our shaders. Alright, now I'm going to create a new folder that I'm going to call uh, Textures. Uh, and I'll grab all of these and go ahead and put them in. Um, I'm also going to, of course, make sure that I bring in my uh, 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 geometry. So I'm going to import the new asset. I just right-clicked inside of here, or I could also come over to the uh, assets, import new asset, either way, same thing. Uh, and then here I want to make sure that I actually bring in uh, the FBX uh, that I was using in Substance Painter. Okay, uh, so once I've got uh, Fellord back in here, this uh, geometry, I'm going to go ahead and generate light map UVs so I can bake it if I need to to make it pretty. Turn off the animation, come over here into the materials, uh, and for now what I'm going to do is uh, tell it to um, go ahead and just uh, see it's using the legacy. I'll use the embedded materials uh, so this will be the uh, the default on most builds. I'll go ahead and click on apply. Um, this will go and grab hold of um, Fellord FBX. It's, uh, that's the geometry there of course. It's going to set up another UV set uh, so this can take just a second to, to work out um, but that should be set. So now uh, if I look at the the model here, then I should be able to just drag it out um, into the scene. Uh, if I frame him, um, then we can start to see he's got some default materials on him. And these default materials don't really matter because we're going to rebuild them as we go. But as you look at each of these, then they have a material for the boots materials gauntlet. Now here's kind of the grunt work, is that what we've got to do is we need to start coming in and being able to rebuild um, these materials. So uh, the way that we'll do this is I'll just come down to the textures. And so for instance, if I'm in body, um, then I want to start to find the ones that have to do uh, with his body, which in this case are actually torso, so torso mat. Um, so these should be pretty easy to do. So for instance, the albedo goes into the albedo, of course. Uh, the AO goes into the occlusion. Um, the metallic smoothness goes into the metallic. Um, and the normal goes into the normal map. I could have also output a height map and maybe in the future I might start doing that. Um, this will give us kind of a, a, a start on what's happening here. Now, um, let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to increase the scale here. Uh, and I'm just going to rotate him, rotate him around 180 degrees so he's facing my camera and the light. Okay, so let me repeat this process once more for one of the other ones and then I'll do the rest of it off camera. 
Uh, so for instance, if I'm looking at the boots, then the material is called boots material, which we should be able to find up here pretty quickly. So albedo and the albedo, AO and the occlusion, uh, metallic smoothness in the metallic, and normals in the normals. Um, so we can start to see that uh, that filling in. One last thing that you want to do is make sure that the color here is always set to white. Uh, so for instance, if I'm looking at the body, I want to override whatever might have been sitting there. So in the gauntlets, uh, I'm going to make sure that the albedo of the base is set to white. Uh, and here start plugging in the gauntlet stuff. So albedo to albedo, AO to occlusion, uh, metallic smoothness to metallic, and normal to normal. Let me start to do that. Okay, I'll do the rest of this off camera and be back in a sec. All right, so I've got all those plugged in, uh, and by default, not too bad. You can start to see um, how things are working out. Um, there is some, still some, some difference in what we see, though, um, over here, uh, as opposed to what we see uh, inside, of, uh, inside of Unity. And a lot of that has to do with uh, how this is actually reflecting surfaces. Now, there's several things that uh, uh, substance actually suggests um, that you do to adjust this. We'll come down into Edit, Project Settings, uh, and then we'll use um, Player. Um, inside of Player, here, let's take a look. Uh, and I'm going to change the color space to Linear, um, which changes how it uh, yeah, how a lot of the color space here works out. Now we can also start to work with a different um, skybox. Right now we've got this skybox that's just this solid blue, um, which can be okay, but uh, we can get so much more um, out of this. So uh, we can go and grab hold actually and bring in some of the skyboxes that we used in Substance Banner. The path here can be a little tricky to find. Uh, it depends on where you've got Substance Painter installed at, um, but uh, in most cases this is going to be in your uh, C drive, in your program files, uh, in your uh, logarithmic file, in the Substance Painter folder, in the Resources folder. Ugh, this, is, this is long, huh? Uh, and shelf, logarithmic, um, environments, and then say exterior wherever. Here are actually all of those EXRs. These are all the environments that you use um, inside of um, inside of Substance Painter. So let's say uh, I'm going to use a few of these. I'm just going to grab. Oh, let's just grab a couple of these. I'm just going to drag them over here. Drop them into my Unity project. Unity will reach out, grab hold of these. These can be fairly large files, so it can take a little bit for uh, it to uh, download these, or and I mean, and bring them into your project. Once they're all in, I'm going to make a new folder that's going to be my uh, environments. I'll go ahead and bring those environments in here. Okay, so I'm going to tell it that first of all, I want to bring this in as a cube uh, because it's going to be used as a as a cube map. Um, second, I need to change it, if they're coming in from Substance Painter, to be using this latitude-longitude uh, layout, the cylindrical ball, uh, to make sure that that's set up. The rest of this, generally, we should be able to uh, keep the same, although we don't actually need it to generate uh, mit maps as well. So I'm going to click on Apply, uh, and that will make that adjustment um, to the CXR. It should generally be fairly quick. If I wanted to, I could build all of these. Uh, really quickly to do it. You'll notice that what this is now is this is a cube uh, cube map project here, a little bit different than we had before. Okay, so once I've got the texture imported like I need to, I need to start creating a material that I can build for this. So I'll create a material. This will be my uh, glazed patio skybox. Uh, the shader that I want to use needs to be of type skybox. Um, so I'll just use the cube map because that's what I'm building so far. And then this will be asking for a cube map. Uh, so now I just drag that over, drop it in, uh, and that's already built. 
Now what I can do is now inside of my lighting tab, inside of my settings, um, then here instead of using the default skybox I can use my glazed patio um, and then I've got that glazed patio that I had over in Substance Painter into the scene. Uh, so this will be used to start to create that. Let me create just some other things here real quick. I'm going to create a uh, just a plane um, on the ground here. Uh, let me go ahead and make that just a little bit larger so that I've got that set up like that. Um, now I can also start to do some other things. Let's say I like this directional light. It's fine. Make sure that it's I've got make sure that it's got some soft shadows and that's working out pretty well. I might choose that I want to make this maybe just a little bit grayer. Uh, I could pick um, a number of other things if I wanted to, but for now I'm just going to leave that there. The last thing that I want to do is even though this is starting to work out for the lighting, I don't have true reflection um, in there. Um, so what I'm going to do is come in and I'm going to make let me make sure that you can see this. I'm going to come into the game object into light and create a reflection probe. Now this reflection probe is similar to the light probe that we did in other um, tutorials. Um, what I can do with this reflection probe is I can kind of put this up here. It starts to calculate the reflection that it would see and it uses that calculation in all of my surfaces that actually use reflection including all of this HDR um, setting. So what we can end up with is something that looks fairly, fairly similar. Now, there's also other things that I should probably make sure that I do at this point. Uh, I'm going to make sure and use the asset store so that I can go and grab things like the post-processing stack. Uh, just as a quick review, um, if we were to do a search here. Okay, thank you. Let's do post-processing stack. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I got, have this in this project. Okay, so I'll import that into the post-processing stack. Alright, I'm going to use this post-processing stack in a second. While I'm at it though, I'm going to uh, make a few other uh, adjustments. One, this main camera is fine for what we're doing here, but if I want to actually use it in game, it doesn't do us a lot of good. So I'm going to get rid of that one and instead bring in uh, the package. And instead I'm going to bring in um, the package that is the cameras. Go ahead and import all of that. With that camera package imported, um, then I can start to come and grab in the standard assets. Let's go ahead and grab the cameras and I'll just use the uh, free look camera rig. I'll go ahead and drop this in with the free look camera rig. I can tell it what my target is. So this will be uh, the Fell Lord. Uh, I can start to work with all sorts of things like making sure my pivot's in a good place. Uh, if I want to, I can take my main camera and pull it back a little bit. What this will allow me to do is that now if I play the game, just with the play button here, uh, then as I move my mouse, then I can choose to look around, uh, kind of spin around and see what's going on. All right, now that I've got my camera in place, my main camera, now I can start doing things like uh, come in and create a post-processing profile. Um, I'm going to apply this post-processing profile to my main camera and so I can turn on things like ambient occlusion if I want to do some other screen space ambient occlusion. Um, let's make sure and put it, oops, I've got to make sure and make the post-processing behavior. Plug that profile in there and then with that profile I can start to do, if I want to do depth of field, I could do depth of field uh, or things like bloom. Uh, maybe a little bit of color gradient uh, if I want to, uh, or any of those other sorts of uh, things that we've talked about uh, in the other areas, vignetting uh, to make this a little prettier uh, as it starts starts to work. So if you maximize on play, we should be able to play this and start to get a pretty good looking um, output all within Unity. But our goal is to make sure that this is as close to what we saw in Substance Painter as we can get. Alright, that's all for this time. I'll see you next time.